Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today for our weekly webinar series. Today, our featured topic is on connectors, types, and polishes. My name is Jessica Petrohoy, and I'm the marketing coordinator at FiberOptic.com. FiberOptic.com is a leading provider of fiber optic products, training, and rental equipment. We're pleased to present this topic to you today. With us today to talk about connectors is Adam Goff. Adam is one of our AdTel integration technicians and one of FiberOptic.com's sales and technical engineers. Adam will be discussing the different types of connectors and their polishes, along with considerations when choosing your connectors. So when Adam is finished, we will take questions from the GoToWebinar question box at the bottom of your screen for a question and answer session. So if at any time throughout the webinar you have a question, go ahead and put it in the box and we'll get to it at the end. And remember that these webinars are recorded and available to you online at fiberoptic.com slash webinar. So thank you again for joining us today. And at this time, I turn the presentation over to Adam. Thank you very much, Jessica. I appreciate that introduction and look forward to sitting down with everyone today um, and go over connectors, types, and polishes today. That is what we are going to be reviewing in this webinar. Uh, this has been brought to you by the Fiber School Professional Technical Training, uh, which has been working hand-in-hand -hand with FiberOptic.com since 95, um, providing certification for uh, work in the field of fiber optics. Um, what we are going to do again today is go over connectors, types, and polishes. It is webinar Wednesday once again at 3 o'clock. Um, this is an excellent, excellent class for uh, great for beginners. This will provide you with some exceptional knowledge in the field, um, not only what to look for, but also how to speak when dealing with, uh, with associates in the field. Um, so without further ado, we are going to go into the overview uh, and agenda of what we're going to be going over. Um, this is going to be going over the essential elements in most of the connectors that you're going to see in the field. We're also actually going to address some of the areas uh, internationally and what people are looking at over there. Uh, we're also going to be looking at what we are seeing in the possible potential future. Um, so with the overview, once again, this is great for beginners. It's going to be wonderful for knowledge in the field. Um, what I wanted to stress is it's going to sound like I'm repeating myself in this webinar uh, once or twice, and I'm doing that on purpose. What I'm trying to do is drill into your brain case, into your head, uh, into your fiber backbone um, to be able to, on the quick, on the fly, know how to address the connector types and the connector polishes. Uh, so it's great for beginners, but it's, uh, it's also good for the weathered pros to get you um, up on the know-how of what the slang is in the field and what uh, the future holds for fiber and where we're going to be going there in the future. Once again, this is the overview. And now we're going to start getting into connector overview, going over the essential elements in most connectors. Now we're going to review uh, some of the newer connectors, some of the older connectors, but most connectors, these are the essential elements that break down what you happen to be looking at when you're looking at a connector. You have your end pressure control device. What that is great for and what that does is that prevents damage. You have your alignment sleeve and the end pressure control device here. You're looking right at the end here, the alignment sleeve. There's the anti-rotation device. What that does is that makes sure that your fiber stays completely aligned and you keep the DB at a regular, steady register that it's showing time and time again. 
the strain relief system keeps pressure off the fiber. And then there is the adapter receptacle. And now this area, we go into detail a little, a little more, and that's the actual ferrules. Breaks down the three main types. And I'm going to give you my two cents on what I feel uh, is some of the better, what we see mostly in the field and uh, where we're going to in the future. First is the ceramic, the ceramic ferrule. This happens to show a ceramic ferrule, it's stating here. But this can be steel, polycarbonate, or plastic. Right now, I feel some of the best, honestly, is ceramic. I'm not a very big fan of steel. I just don't feel that when you go in and test it, that it tests super well. Um, it seems that from a cost standpoint, uh, plastic may be in our not too distant future in a one to, to six year range of making the, a true turnaround. Um, but ceramic, I feel, is the most popular right now and, and, uh, and performs very well also. So that is our connector overview. Now, like I said before, we are going to review uh, more than one or two connectors here, uh, but this gives you kind of a, a good breakdown and backbone, no matter what type you're looking at, of the connector overview and the essential elements in most connectors. Now, this, this is really, unfortunately, is what it really boils down to. Um, I'm going to be upfront and honest with you in my webinars and really try and give you the most useful information. When it comes down to connector consideration, this is the six areas that it really boils down to. Cost, ease of installation, loss budget, size, repeatability, and time. The biggest driving factor all project managers look at, all companies, T-Mobile, AT&T, um, whoever it happens to be, uh, JDSU, Expo, is cost. Boils down to the connector cost and the installation cost. Now, it's not always money, and that's something people always say to me, oh, yeah, it's the dollars and cents. No, no, no. That's, that's where a lot of people, it's time also. The installation cost. How much time is it going to take while using this connector to get in and out? It costs a little more, but I'm a little faster. Some companies like that. That saves on hours that me and you are out in the field working on some of these uh, projects. But then also, you know, we boil down to loss budget. But cost is big. So there's the connector cost. That's the actual physical cost, the price, the dollars and cents. How much does that connector cost? Well, the better performing to best performing connectors are going to be the most expensive. Just like in sports, quarterback makes the most money. Best player on the team in baseball makes the most money. Basketball, swimming, volleyball. Best players, they bring in the most money. Same with connectors. Best performing connectors, they're going to cost a little more. Installation cost, that's the time. How long does it take for me to get this connector on a pigtail, spliced, and then up and running? That's your installation cost. Ease of installation, see how I subtly eased right into that, is connector density. That's something that's key, easing right into it. Next breaks down to the loss budget. Now, I'm not going to some of these areas go too deeply um, into some of the information because this is more of a beginner uh, start-up course. If you're looking for more higher education, you can always, always uh, contact us at the Fiber School or fiberoptic.com, and we're happy to go ahead and extend some, uh, some training your way or at least get you out a quote to give you an idea of what you're looking at. But loss budget depends big on connector style and also ferrule material, which is what we were reviewing in the, uh, in the slide past. So the steel, ceramic, plastic, 
Notice how I said steel first. The reason I said steel is lost budget, feral material. I feel that ceramic performs much better than steel. Some people may argue with me on that, but I really feel nine times out of ten you'll, you'll have ceramic performing better than steel. And that's just from after being connected and, and uh, actually go ahead and, and testing. So that's a personal personal uh, feeling. Loss budget is something that's big. This varies from company to company. There are standards and there are uh, um, you know requirements, but AT&T is different from T-Mobile. They don't differ much, but they, uh, their DV loss is, is, you know, some companies are very strict. Some companies, when you go and test, only allow you to use IOLM testing. And if for those that know ILM testing, that could be very finicky. And if you don't get things out exactly right with the connector style, feral material, um, and uh, you can have issues, and it can be a long time running. But next we move on to there's two main styles and sizes, and that's the standard, which is very common in the field, very common right now. But then there's the SFF 1.2 millimeter. That's smaller. Everything has to be in America bigger, better, faster, not fiber. We're trying to go smaller, get more fiber in the same spot, half the size. Standards common right now. This is what we see. We're going to see it for a while. But the SFF, that's the future. See, and I'm saying SFF right now purposely because you may not know what that is. If you do, good for you. When you're in the field, this course, this webinar is really to kind of repeat these, these terms, these concepts, these thoughts in your head uh, over and over and over. It's a little bit of practice. So when you're in the field and somebody asks you something, not only do you know what you're doing, but you know how to say what you're doing and you can say it quickly. Ironically, after me just saying all of that, it's repeatability. Being able to do what you want to do time and time again. Getting that same DB loss that that company requires you to do time and time again. Same loss, each connect and each disconnect. If you can do that, you are a master in your field and you will be making a large, a lot model, a large, large amount of money. Time, anaerobic style, the 3M hot melt, and quick termination. This is just a breakdown for connecting your your uh, connector considerations. Connector types. So now this is where. It, you know, ah, Adam, you're repeating yourself. I don't mean to repeat myself, but it, it's important. Um, standard connectors. We're going to see those a lot. Small form factor connectors. SFF. Small form factor connectors. SFF. When you work in the field, there, sometimes you have to talk on the phone with an individual called a knock. For everyone that's familiar with a knock, we all know there are some good ones out there. There are some great ones, but there are some knocks that are not the best. And when I simply say that, when they go to talk to you, they say, well, I need the SFF connected to the 3M, SC, FC, to the APC. And this is honestly how they talk. So if you get anything out of this connector webinar, it's how to kind of pick up on the lingo, lango, jango when you get a whiskey tango and somebody's talking to you. So, you know, you know what somebody is saying and uh, you, you don't have to just kind of pick it up on the fly. So just wanted to make sure that, you know, I got that out. And, and like I said, if I'm repeating myself, there's a reason for it. There's a method behind the madness. And, uh, and I hope that it's helpful for you. Um, the industry, our industry in fiber, it's constantly changing. 
You need to not only know what you're talking about, but stay familiar with those changes in the field because it's important to know what you're working with on. It's also important to be knowledgeable about all of those products and parts. You know, and, and here's another thing when you're out there in the field, um, I'm not ever saying that, you know, not knowing the right uh, short slime for an ST connector is going to cost you a job, but, it, you know, it might cost you a bit in the future. Just simple little things, you know, really do go a long way. You know, it, it, it's uh, knowing, you know, why is this fusion splicer not working? Well, the electrodes are burnt out and they're old, you know. Well, what's an electrode? Just little things like that. Just knowing all the ins and the outs. You know, so it, we like to say out in the field when you're new and everybody's new eventually, but we call those people greenhorns. And uh, it's always funny, you know, kind of pulling pranks with them and, and uh, joking around. But, you know, you have to learn somewhere and this is a great place to start. And like I said before, I'm not trying to uh, repeat myself on this, but if you're looking for more advanced training, uh, you know, the fiber school is a great place to look for it, and uh, we're happy to help you out. All right, connector types. Once again, what were common? Standard connectors. That's what we're looking at right now. Internationally, still domestically also, mostly SC, but we're looking at some small form factor connectors. So standard connectors. The SAMTOM ST, most likely you're just going to hear somebody say ST out in the field. SAMTOM stands for straight tip, was developed by AT&T predominantly in the, you know, late 80s, early 90s. 2.5 millimeter, millimeter fil cure, keyed ferrule. It's commonly in network applications. Frank Charlie, the old FC, is a fiber optic connector with a threaded body. Single mode optical fiber, maintaining polarization of optical fiber, really designed for high, high vibration environments. The Sam Charlie, standard subscribed connector, fiber optic cable connector that uses a push-pull latching mechanism. I like this one. Small form factor connectors. Got the MU, the miniature unit. Now we're looking at 1.25 millimeter. It's very common in Japan. Japan, China, overseas. The MT-RJ, that's the me Mechanical Transfer Register Jack. Support full duplex. We'll go over why these are nice a little later. Now, as far as domestically, the LC, the old Lucent connector. No longer with us, Lucent, wonderful company. But has been taken over. Still bears the name LC, Lucent connector. A lot of people like to say little connector. It's a miniaturized version of the big brother, the SC. Looks similar, but half the size. Said it before, bigger, faster, stronger. Not with fiber. Smaller, that's faster. Being able to get twice as much in the same spot. Amazingly, it could get even smaller than the LC. And then we have the MPO. Multi-fiber push-on. Not seen very, very often, not currently, but in the future. It's very possible in the future. Common connectors. Look at that. It's almost like I'm kind of repeating myself here. Sam Tom ST. Multi-mode and single mode. Also least expensive. Local area networks. This is what you're looking at, this drawing here. And as you can see, the advantage very common. It's very common because it's one of the least expensive also. Frank Charlie, FC, single mode. 
Telecom Telecommunications. This picture here is a very good description of what it looks like. Non-optical disconnect. Then we have the Sam Charlie. Multi-mode and single mode. One difference, one big uh, advantage, disadvantage with the old Frank Charlie. Only single mode. The ST and the SC, both multi or single mode. SCs used with telecom and local networks. Notice the difference here. See how these are more circular, where they have sort of a screw lock-in? This is a snap-in. Sam Charlie, big fan favorite. Little brother, the LC. SCLC. You say it enough, you do it enough, and uh, it's practice, it's repeating it. You know, and it gets burned in. May seem a little confusing, but it's honestly, it's very simple. Just practice and repetition. This is the easy part. Doing a little uh, splicing and then testing to see how these guys work out in the field. That, that's, that's where it gets a little more difficult. Now this is each connector we just went over quickly in a little more detail. The ST connector, that's the old Sammy Tom, Sam Tom. First developed by AT&T, 2.5 millimeter ferrule, round with locking tabs. That's the difference here. You see these locking tabs? Great when it's brand new. Wonderful. Locks in that, that baby, she's not going anywhere. When that's been there a couple years, Sometimes in weather, that isn't the best. Try, try removing those without damaging the fiber. Can be difficult at times, especially if that, that's metal and it went and rusted on over. So something that goes for a simple cleanup ends up being you splicing and retesting to make sure that you have the connection. You know, a lot of things go into play here with connectors. This is still the most common in multimode applications. Declining popularity, still in high vibration environments. You want to know why in high vibration environments? Because that, that locks in. You lock in with that, that bad boy's not going anywhere, even with high vibration. FC connector. The old FC. Historically, it's used in single mode applications. That's pretty much that's what we said before. Screws on for a firm fit. Once again, you get it. I mean, you get this fit. It's locked on. It's wonderful. Only problem sometimes with the threads if it doesn't lock on and you don't get that firm fit that you're looking for with your fiber. It's going to have reflective events. You're going to have some DB loss. So as good as these are, there's another reason why the FC came after what we saw prior. And so this is their new upgrade and new version being replaced by SC and LC. And that's what's coming up next, and that's what we're going to review. But this was the next, the biggest, the baddest, still used, still a good product, but there's always a newer and better. Instead of newer and bigger, it's newer and smaller. 2.5 millimeter ferrule, best pullout strength. That's undeniable. The FC has a wonderful, wonderful pullout strength. And then, it's almost like this slide just is volleyballing us uh, for e each slide coming up. Here's your SC connector. Sam Charlie. This is, in my opinion, the future. And right here is that this it jumps out to you the difference. Where the first prior connectors, both, they were circular. Everything circular in a circular motion. Now, we kind of have this push-pull locking mechanism. 
and it really is wonderful. It makes a world of difference. And I feel that's why it's the future. Now this is the SC. The future future, that's the LC. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We don't want to go crazy here. We still got plenty of time. I uh, don't know if I told you earlier in uh, the webinar, but we like to keep our webinar Wednesdays to an hour. I'm going to do a little better and keep you just under an hour because I like to save some time at the end for questions. Once again, questions and concerns we're going to go over at the end. So if you go ahead and write in. If I don't have enough time, because you can tell that I can really flap my gums here a little bit and you know, that's just part of the, uh, the job here, gift of the gab, if you'll say. But really, with your questions at the end, if we don't have time to get to them, you better believe we'll email you. And uh, so, you know, send your email or call you. We're happy to go in, in uh, grave detail um, about it. Uh, and once again, you know, if you ever needed other training, we have it here at the Fiber School. We also offer products. That's from actually FiberOptic.com, and we do offer services. So uh, I am the sales and technical engineer here, um, mostly working in the office, but sometimes I get out and actually uh, work with the guys and uh, get a little hands-on, and that's nice too. You get to see what's changing out there in the field, what people are working with, and uh, what products they like. So getting back into the SC connector, which is going to be, once again, our future, uh, something that gives them away right away is the blue to beige, or I say gray, uh, colors. Um, the SC subscriber connector snaps in and out. The EIA TIA 5686 standard connector, it's just the governing breakdown, uh, so they're all uniform. Um, still 2.5 millimeter ferrules. These are the bigger boys for the connectors. When we get to the uh, smaller connectors, we'll go over uh, the ins and the outs of them, and they're half the, half the size ferrule-wise. Low loss, greater pull-out strength. Now the SFF, small form factor connectors. This is all 1.25 millimeter. Any application involving large number of fiber is a candidate for high density connectors. So when you're looking, I'm not talking about 6 to 12 fibers. Uh, we're talking about places, my goodness, with 250 to 600 fibers easily all in one location. And as amazing as it may sound, you know, Adam, 2.5 millimeter, do you know how small that is? Have you ever seen the size of that connector? It's so small. What is 1.5 millimeter or 2.5 millimeters? How's that going to make a difference? It makes a world of difference. It really does. And it's going to be amazing when we even go smaller than this because the fiber, it's just, it's, it really is amazing. All right, well, we're halfway home here, guys. Um, I am going to, this is not a plug. Uh, that, is, that is an energy drink that's being opened right there. So we're, uh, we're on the home stretch. We're on the back nine. Uh, do the seventh inning stretch. And we're going to continue on here and, and uh, finish up this webinar. And if you have questions, we'll get to them also. So uh, SFF connectors, small form factor connectors, very, very popular overseas. Um, popular here also becoming more and more popular, but predominantly very strong internationally. Small form factor connectors. This gives you a nice breakdown of everything here. With more and more fiber going into our communication rooms, that's like what I was just telling you before, 200, 600 separate fibers going into one telco room. It's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. Everything has to be faster. More gigs. More cell phone reception, you know, higher speed, getting my information. That's that's all this is. 
No additional space available. Small form factor connector types. They're increasing more and more with popularity. It's just, it's, it's the truth. It really is. Small form factor refers to any of the several physical compact connector types that have been developed to deal with the increasing destiny in communication pet, uh, spaces. It's just not enough room. And that's why we got to go smaller. They're typically half the size of the conventional con uh, connectors, and most have a 1.25 millimeter ferrule. I've seen some at 0.75 millimeter ferrule. It, it just, it's, it's very interesting. It's just getting smaller and smaller. Get more in there, just make it smaller. Now we're going to go over the SFF in a little more detail, break them down kind of one by one. This one I don't see as often. It's a pretty neat looking guy though. The VF-45 Volition. The VF-45 Volition connector was designed by 3M and consists of two-part plug and socket configuration. The connector uses two 8-degree cleaved bare fibers. So you can see how it's at an angle there. Space 4.5 millimeter apart and holds the fiber in V grooves rather than a ferrule. The VF45 is only used as a duplex style connector. So like I said, I do not honestly see these very often, but they are out there. Something you are going to see very often, all the time, see it in the field. It's the LC connector. Designed, once again, by Lucent Technologies. Good company. We miss them. It's used in simplex and duplex applications. Designed with a 1.25 millimeter ceramic ferrule and fiber spacing of 6.25 millimeter. LC, it's got the lowest insertion loss by far of any of the small form connectors. And that makes it one of the most popular. The MT-RJ, designed by AMP, and it's really one of the smallest. The footprint of this style connector is half of the SC and uses a plastic ferrule in duplex configuration. That's 0.75 millimeter apart. And key here, it's plastic. It's kind of mind boggling, but that may be the future of fiber. Little, little food for thought here on Webinar Wednesday. The MU, it's designed by Tyco. It's a, always available, simplex or duplex. The MU connector uses a zirconian ferrule, and it's designed based on the SC connector. Very similar. Only real big main difference is that zirconian ferrule. Where I'm seeing the MU often, not so much domestically, not surprisingly, Japan and China. SFFMU. In a little more detail here. The single mode and multi-mode MU connector are all small form factor connectors, approximately half the size of the standard SC connector. The MU has a push-pull style. So you can see it almost like you can see how you can push it on, pull it off. And free floating 1.25 ferrule held in place with a precision spring. Even these guys, and this is plastic, there's no real metal here. After they've been plugged in for quite some time, sometimes they're tough to, to attach and detach, connect and disconnect. It's, it is what it is, but that's, you know, that's why you have to check up and maintain on these. Cleanliness is next to godliness in this field. That is, that is for sure. The single mode or multi-mode of the MTRJ are used in a two-fiber application and are well-suited for high-density applications. Once again, those areas where it's just 
there's just not a lot of room. It fits in nicely. You know, it, it's just that smaller aspect. It has precision molded MT ferrules. And there's these two metal guide pins. And what it does is that ensures the proper fiber alignment when you're mating them. It's really, it's a, a very reliable and simple connector to terminate. It really, really is. The old LC. This is a great picture here. All three of them in a line. Compared to the SC, these guys look so tiny. The ferrules, it, it just, it's, it's really, it's mind-boggling how tiny this is. And then we're going to go smaller than this. Once again, the LC Lucent family of both single and multi-mode connectors manufactured once Lucent, now OFS, Vitel. Small form factor, the SFF. Got to just keep saying it, burning into the brain. High density, it's great for those high density applications. Once again, ferrule 1.25. Can use for either PC or APC end face, which is another aspect that makes it very uh, popular. The LC is used for a small diameter mini cordage. And the LC family, Telcordia, ANSI, EIA, and TIA, and EIC compliant. Another reason why the LC is so popular. The L should stand for loved connector. That's because how many people really enjoy it. They, they really prefer to work with it. What is a PMO connector? Well, that's a multi-fiber push-on. The EIC-61754-7, that's the standard internationally. The EIA and the TIA-604-5, that's the U.S. standard. And that just breaks it down for you. Which is big if you go to a job and you have products that don't match those standards, you know, that's that's going to be an issue there. You know, so you want to make sure that you always get the right connectors. Just some good food for thought. The MPO is often used in FTTX applications as a pre-connectorized drop cable as well as gaining in popularity as an indoor premise backbone cable. So that's that's good. Non-polished connectors. The mechanical connectors contain an integral fiber stub and index max chin gel. The stub is bonded to the ferrule and factory polished. The fiber to be terminated is stripped, cleaved, and cleaned. Then it's inserted into the back of the connector and mechanically secured. This is all done by machines, not by human hands. While significantly more expensive epoxy connectors, the time saving makes this an effective alternate to scribing and polishing in the field. And I tell you what, if you've ever had to scribe or polish in the field, this is what you would prefer to do nine times out of ten. Because, like I said before, working in the field rarely is the field a clean place to work in. And when it comes to fiber, everything needs to be perfect and perfectly clean because without that, um, your fiber is not going to test well and it's just not going to work. Now we're going to go into connector polishes a little more detail. So now you have the terminology for the connectors, their names themselves. Now we've got to get the polishes down. So now we dive a little more deeper into it. And this is what the polishes really do. It gives you the performance issues. 
You have the flat, the PC, the UPC, and the APC. When I just throw that around like that, that sounds okay, but what does it mean? You know, what does each one of those mean? Well, I see it's showing a back reflection. I see neg 30 dB, neg 35 dB, neg 55 dB, neg 65 dB. APC, I'll save, save you. That's the best. We'll go into why. Flat, slightly rounded, dome, angled. Once the optical fiber is terminated with a per particular connector, the connector end face geometry, that's the connector polish, whether it's flat, slightly rounded, dome, APC angled, will determine the amount of return loss and back reflection. So now after going over all of those connectors, this is the feral tips right here that we're looking at. As small as they are, this is what each one of them look like. And because of flat PC, UPC, APC, that gives you a return loss and a black back reflection and that affects your fiber and how it transports information, whether it's for your cell phone, your computer, your television. Each one of these affects how quickly it happens to come to you. Minimizing back reflection is critical for the proper performance of high-speed laser-based fiber optic systems. The better you have minimize that back reflection, the better your high speed performance of your fiber optic system works. It's really that simple. Once again, going over the connector polishes in a little more detail here, shows you the flat PC, XPC, UPC, and APC. Flat most commonly found on metal ferrules. Not a big fan. And you can see now why I'm not a big fan because the flat, if you look before, flat, worst back reflection. Probably becoming less and less common. Not as popular, big surprise, that's the PC. Significant back reflection. Metal, not a huge fan favorite but you still see them. PC, physical contact. This is the slightly domed ferrule. See, when you're up, zoomed up close, it's a lot easier to see. Slightly farther away, this is, you know, human eye here. Ceramic ferrule, once again, 30 dB. XPC, this is a super physical contact, high radius dome. Slightly higher, and you can actually see that by the human eye gives you better dB back reflection. Right, when you think XPC is the best, UPC comes along. The Ultra PC High Radius Dome. Ceramic ferrule, once again, neg 55 dB back reflection. Then we have the best is the APC. Better should say one of the better performing, one of the best performing. And that's because of the angled, the eight degree angle on the physical uh, contact. Ceramic once again. See now this is the reflection issues that uh, we were just going over. And this slide's good. The optical return loss, testing, tests back reflection which is detrimental to high-speed laser transitions. These two pictures right here show why with an angled physical contact you have better performance for your fiber. And there's a reason why and it's because of the angle. That's the best thing that I can give you from this slide. 
special polish connector, Super PC, Ultra PC, APC, stands for the physical contact, stands for the better performance of this light going through this fiber. That's what it breaks down to. You have two pictures here. The first here, this is not as good of a connection for the fiber transmission for the light going through. With the angle here, it gives it a better opportunity to transmit that fiber from one end to another. These special finishes change the geometry of the ferro face and are used to re reduce the amount of light that's reflected back to the fiber. Little bit of Science 101 there. Once again, this is still a beginner, so we don't go into too much of uh, you know, grave detail about that, but it's important to know. Once again, so you're in the field, you sound knowledgeable, you know what you're talking about, and uh, you know, you're not standing there uh, confused or embarrassed when dealing with an employer. APC shows the DB loss and return. Best performance, and guess what? Most cost. There's that quarterback again. Best player on the field, best performer, well, you're going to pay him the most. Very easy to see the old APC because it is a green connector. Can't miss it. They, they, APC, you see it's green right away, you know, oh, that's APC. Little, little easy ways to cheat here. Least back reflection used for CATV, FTTX, and testing applications. Properly mated, APC connectors are virtually lossless and invisible to an OD, OTDR. That's true. I just did a job up in Providence, Rhode Island not too long ago. Some of the connectors, it was amazing. Brand new connectors. They show up, we, we splice them, go ahead and test them. Splices were so good, it, it wasn't even showing. It was barely even noticeable. It was beautiful. Same connector right next to where we go from fiber one to fiber two. Fiber one's beautiful. Go to fiber two and uh, test terribly. And it simply breaks down to uh, either manufacturing flaws or uh, cleanliness while making those connections. So, you know, you have to go clean it again and you test again, clean it again. But for the best performance, you're looking at the APC connector in the field. For right here, right now, 2016, it is May 4th, APC, that's what you're looking at. That's what's popular, that's what people like. And uh, that is the, the best, best performance in the field. That's why they like it. And finally, I want to thank everyone for joining us. And uh, really appreciate everybody uh, coming on out. And uh, we are now at the question section, the question and answer section. Um, I do see quite a few questions here, so I'm definitely going to take time and go over a few. Uh, don't forget, this is our Webinar Wednesday. I'm starting to sound like a TV or radio host. Every Wednesday, 3 o'clock, that's our Webinar Wednesday. Um, we have uh, another great uh, scheduled event coming up next week. You can check our listing. Um, this was our connectors. Um, it was uh, my second time giving it this year, and I look forward to uh, going over with the Fiber School and possibly doing another webinar shortly. But first, let me get to um, – and uh, let me give my uh, name out real quick. Um, Adam, A-D-A-M dot goth. G-O-T-H at fiberoptic.com um, and you can see right down there in the right hand corner so that is adam.goth at fiberoptic.com just in case if we don't get uh, to everybody's question here at, at the end 
Um, it is at 49 minutes right now, so we are at uh, the tail end. You guys are almost out of the woods. Let me just address some of these good questions we got here, and then I will cut you free. If you have any other questions, uh, don't hesitate to email me, and uh, I would be happy to uh, reach out to you either by phone or by email. Um, one great question I have here, um, when dealing with fiber, um, what would red be for? Um, and when they say what would red be for, they mean uh, some of the connector colors. Why would a connector be red? Um, it's not mandated, but what red usually represents is it's for critical surf, uh, circuits. Um, usually that's for military applications, um, for all of the secrets that they're looking to hide. Uh, they also have orange and also uh, uh, light blue. But yeah, red is usually not mandated, but it is once again for, uh, for critical circuits. Um, so those are, those are even the more, all fiber is important, but those are the more uh, important fibers. So that was a good question. Um, the next question I have here, is do you think the quick connectors have a place or should we use polished or a fusion splice? Um, that's a good question and uh, I'm going to answer it in this way. Um, I really don't, I'm not a big fan of, of quick connectors. Um, the reason is, is because they they show reflective events. I mean, you have a mechanical splice inside the quick connector, and that can show a reflective event there in its own. Um, I personally say, hey, fuse on a pigtail on that connector and get on with life. You know, make it easier on everybody, especially if you have to do, um, you know, a large amount of uh, terminations and reconnections. So that'll save everybody a lot of time, a lot of money, and uh, you'll cut down on your reflective events there. Um, so another good question. Uh, I wanted to keep it under an hour for everyone here. Uh, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to give me a call. Uh, you can reach out to me directly at adam.goth at fiberoptic.com or call me at 877-529-9114. My extension is 6010. Happy to help out in any way, shape, or form. Uh, also happy to help out with any products, future training, or if you guys need any help with even services in one way or another. I'll have a lot of great people here at the Fiber School and fiberoptic.com really like helping out people that we uh, work with in the field. So I really appreciate everyone making, uh, making this webinar Wednesday, spending some time with me. Hopefully, uh, if I repeated myself too many times, then I did my job right. And uh, you know the difference between a SAMTOM and uh, SC to APC, and you have some of those uh, thoughts and ideologies burned into your head. And... Um, yeah, I really appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, look forward to speaking with you if, uh, if you have any questions in the future. And uh, all I can say is make it a great day, gang. Thanks for joining us and talk with you again soon.